Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Books. This is a video series that I am doing for the Powell River Public Library. My name is Megan Cole. I am the Teen Services Coordinator at the library. Right now I am working from home, as many of us are, as we uh, practice physical distancing. And something we're missing right now is all of you, of course, and hearing what you're reading and sharing what we're reading, which is something we do a lot of at the library. Um, so in these videos, I talk a little bit about what I have read um, at home in my downtime and recommend some books that I really love. And so last week I chatted a little bit about a book that I had read last year called uh, Dear Evelyn. And I shared a little bit about the books that I was reading at the time and had recently finished. And last week I finished um, When Women Were Birds by Terry Tempest Williams. And it was a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, if you have the chance to read it, I highly recommend it. It was just so beautifully written. Um, and for writers in the world, I recommend this to you. Uh, she talks a lot about voice and also structure, um, which is something writers uh, battle on an ongoing basis. So it was interesting to see how she approaches structure and in particular approach structure for her book Refuge. So I finished that book and then I moved on to something else. And the book I moved on to was this book um, called Unquiet by Lynn Allman. And this book we actually have at the library when we're open. Um, but it was kind of rec recommended to me in an interesting way because I was reading another book um, called Adventures in Memory, which is written by two Norwegian sisters. And in that book, it is an exploration of memory and how we remember things and where in our brains we remember things and do we lose our memory with time. And so it was just this really excellent exploration of memory. I'm now recommending another book, but I highly recommend it because um, it's a scientist sister and a novelist sister writing together, which makes this kind of I, probably more complicated subject really accessible. And so I really enjoyed that book for that reason. But in the pages of that book, they talk about this book. And um, the reason I think they approached this book and wrote about it is she's also Norwegian, um, Lynn Allman, but it's also a kind of an interesting exploration of memory and what we remember. And it is a novel. And I wonder if she chose to put um, novel on the cover because she wasn't sure of her memories. And because it is, when you look it up online, people have described it as a biographical memory. Um, some people call this auto fiction. And it's where um, authors tend to rely heavily on their personal lives as the subject matter for their novels. As a nonfiction writer myself, I am confused by this genre, but I really enjoy reading it. Um, I find it an interesting kind of exploration in my own mind of how I approach nonfiction. But this book, um, to give you a little description, is a story of a woman. She's never named in the book outright. Um, and her parents, her father is a filmmaker, her mother is an actress and writer. Um, they come together and have a child as lovers. Her father has had multiple wives, multiple children, multiple families. And uh, it's this kind of looking back at her life with her father as he's dying. Um, some reviewers have compared it to Joan Didion's uh, the Year of Magical Thinking, because it's kind of this grief memoir, her coming to terms with the death of her father um, around when he starts to age and begins to be dying. Um, they decide together to work on a book and they record interviews where she talks to him about the work of dying, because at some point he talks to her about how much work it is to die. And so they start having these conversations about death, about life, about longing, and it's just really beautifully written. 
um, made me want to go to Norway. <laughs> the, the way they describe the architecture is really beautiful. And it is just a really interesting examination of how we remember things because she you can tell she's kind of battling with she can't remember her father she can't remember certain people she's met she can remember things about them smells their shoes even um but she can't remember the details and i think it's just such a true um reflection of how our memories work and some people have photographic memories and other people just don't they can remember feelings and senses about something but not the details so i really enjoyed that part of it as someone who uh, writes nonfiction, who writes memoir um i thought it was just really interesting to explore that but there's the novel and the story in the novel and then there's real life and in real life uh lynn allman she is a norwegian author and journalist she's written six novels and she also writes a column for a uh, Norwegian newspaper but an interesting tidbit is the characters in the book are this woman and her parents her parents the man is her father is the Swedish filmmaker her mother the actress in real life uh, Lynn Allman's mother was Liv Allman a Norwegian actress and her father was Ingmar Bergman who is a well-known Swedish filmmaker and they created several movies together remained good friends just like the mother and father in the book so uh, where fact and fiction meet I'm not sure uh, but it is a beautiful book um, I think it's if it's true it's a beautiful ode to her parents and to her father and I really recommend this book so I thought I would read a little bit from it um, from near the end don't worry I'm not giving much away because this book kind of moves in a non-linear way so non-chronological it moves back and forth in time and uh, this book this chapter um, it's her father is aging and it's near the end um, and I'll just jump in here because it's easier than me trying to describe where it is. There were no staircases in the house in Hamars, and toward the end, there were no, do no door sills either. When my father became dependent on a wheelchair, Cecilia removed all the door sills so that he, could, so that he, at least in theory, could move freely from one room to the other. He didn't like the wheelchair, couldn't figure out how to maneuver it. He missed putting on the chalk white sneakers and taking walks on the beach or bicycling through the forest. He missed the red jeep and the sounds it made when you stepped on, on the gas and sped along the narrow roads, for example, to Hamara's or Damba to see, the, to see a film, or from Hamara's to the church to light a candle for Ingrid, or from Hamara's to the ferry dock to buy newspapers in Farasund. Towards the end, he no longer had a word for loss. He no longer said, I miss this, or I long for that. The assumption that he missed his Jeep, his bicycles, his sneakers is mine. When I say towards the end, I mean the last weeks of summer before he died. Some of his children were at Hamar's during this period. He spoke of, with them one at a time. But I no longer recorded our conversations on tape. He didn't have a word for tape either, or work, or children. On the next to last recording we made, it was in the spring, he wonders whether he should go find his sneakers and his Jeep and go on a journey. His whole life he has longed for Hamar's, just to be able to be there, not having to pack his bags every autumn and return to Stockholm or Munich to be. But now that he is finally here, he thinks it might be time to go, maybe to the city, to Stockholm. He didn't like to travel. It gave him stomach aches. He hated the thought of moving from one place to another. The thought of unfamiliar streets, unfamiliar rooms, unfamiliar faces, unfamiliar voices filled him with dread. Travel stole time from the meticulously planned and deeply ingrained routines 
and at least from what he proudly called the exercise of his profession. Many people like to travel, but for those who don't, the experience is roughly like this. A trip is not only the trip itself, it's all the time you spend thinking about it before you leave and after you come back home. I don't know whether thinking is the right word here. You may very well manage to not think about it, but you can't afford you can't avoid feeling permeated by it in some way. The trip has taken up residence inside you, and you have to live with it for some time before embarking on it, and for some time after it has come to an end. In this way, it is a lot like the flu. I, ha I have long runaways for takeoff and landing, he used to say. Despite all this, at the end of his life, while still able to remember the word longing, he longed to travel away from the island and back to the city. And that is from I'm Quiet by Lynn Allman. And we've had some responses from some of you about what you've been reading in the past few weeks. I know um, I saw someone is reading The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. I saw that uh, The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna came up. Uh, Brownie, who many of you know from the Powell River Public Library, um, recommended a favorite of hers, which is The Sound of a Snail Eating. And I would love to know what else all of you are reading right now. Um, if you would like to email me, my email address is cole at prpl.com, and I will share with others what you've been reading so that we can all build great to read piles to get through these times of physical distancing, but also when the library is open again, we will all have books we will need to read, and that's exciting as well. So until next time, I hope that you stay cozy and safe and healthy and read some great books, and we will see you here next week. Goodbye.